Hey guys, uh, this is Akshisura. Uh, today we will be looking at uh, the second part of the Create Custom Plugin. Uh, what we'll be taking a look at is how to customize the Setcore Commerce Experience Accelerator storefront. That's a mouthful. Uh, so basically, SXC components for commerce and how uh, we can customize those so using existing uh, renderings, modifying them, configuring them, and displaying the information we gathered or uh, customize the order entity to add a new component uh, for the loyalty points on the order and order line items. So we'll just take a look at it today. Um, we, I wanted to go into much more detail, like actually creating the controller APIs, um, having um, the ability to expose them, pass objects through, and things like that. But uh, for this demo, it didn't make sense for me to get into that much complexity. So I started off making it super complex and spent a couple of days on it. Uh, and then uh, Kautilya Prasad, he was so sweet, he got on the go to meeting with me. And uh, after like an hour of looking at what I was doing, uh, he mentioned something really simple like, why are you reinventing the wheel? And it took me like five minutes to fix what I spent a day and a half on. So that goes to tell you that there are better ways to do things. It's just a matter of trying to find them or actually having the knowledge to do so. So as people around, again, like the Slack channel is amazing to get ideas uh, like this. So uh, first, uh, the first part of the the uh, creator plugin is on the blog as well as on YouTube. So just take a look. Um, Hopefully that will help. Uh, we will take a look at the second part of it. Uh, just as a reminder, this is the um, commerce architecture. So we did the part where we uh, uh, added a plugin. Um, uh, part of it was on the SIR engine side, which we took care of it. Part of it is on the website side, which is what we're going to take care of today. Originally, I had both the commerce engine as well as the commerce website on the same solution. It kind of got a little bit cumbersome, cumbersome um, not able to debug both at the same time because they're in the same solution. Uh, it just got a little bit irritating and roundabouty way, so I just split them into two solutions so I can run both at the same time and have them both attached and debugging at the same time. So that's what we'll see today. So last time we saw that this is yet another order. Um, we saw that we were able to get the points earned at, a, at an order level, as well as uh, individual line items. Uh, we were able to get them taken care of um, and also uh, we wanted a way for these to be exposed on the the UI front of it. So if we really look at this, we have the same order displayed here, but we didn't really expose it um, as to um, you know what the what the points are on this. So we want to be able to display it at a order level as well as we want to and maybe extend it afterwards to display it at the order line item level. So we'll take a look at what's involved to do it at an order level. So in our um, uh, the website solution, we have virtual D website, and then we have um, uh, we have our project in there. I what uh, I did is I pulled the order header view uh, from the views commerce orders because that's the view which is used to render um, from a user perspective so i took that uh, and then we need to extend it a little bit so essentially what we did and i'll show you uh, i didn't want to type every single thing but again this code will be available for you guys to take a look at um, so we have the order when or the header rendering model, which inherits from what there is currently. And we want to add these two attributes to it. Uh, and we will somehow 
get the value in the tooltip and the actual label at some uh, point in a different way. But the main thing we need is the point term. So in order to do that, essentially what we did is um, do everything the base does, but essentially get um, get the order. And if that call was successful, essentially what we would do is we would try to find the component, which is a loyalty component at an order level, pull the value and then assign it. If not, then we just show zero. So loyalty uh, order manager is uh, in here. So it's inherited from this. Essentially, we want to get a response from it, which is um, the off type and get a lot of get loyalty order result and an order back because it's just a regular order. So if you look at that one, again, plain simple. Um, just note that some of these like order is uh, exists in uh, different namespaces. So you wanna make sure you come into conflicts where it won't be able to cast it to something else and you just have to deal with a bunch of stuff so sometimes it just makes sense to just stress for the whole namespace so coming back to this this is what we've defined we're going to get all of these plus the order id so the, the basic code for that is um, essentially we um, get connected to the engine so remember there's a proxy concept uh, which is the bridge between what happens on the engine and what happens on the website. The proxy is the one which triages all the calls, uh, similar to what you do from Postman. So essentially we're saying, get me the shops container, and we're basically using the uh, call for orders. So this one is very similar to the get orders call, uh, which we have in, um, in one of the sample postman scripts and I'll go over that shortly. So essentially what we're saying is get me the order uh, and there's a function which gets generated on the proxy called by key. We're passing in the order ID. So if you pass it through postman, the ID attribute of the route uh, qualifies and then you can send it through that. But in here um, we do by key and then you need, this is interesting and again, I am not an OData expert by any means, but I had to figure it out. But essentially, um, you can expand on the objects instead of what's returned. So what's returned is an order. So we wanted to expand the lines so that we have expand lines. And um, so in the expand attributes, we just have text. So once it expands the lines, we want to expand the cart line items and the components. So essentially, um, the cart line components get expanded, the lines components get expanded, the entire order gets expanded, but it's just the way to query it in no data. Again, I'm not an expert on something which I'm trying to pick up. We bring that order from there, if we did get a valid order, set it to the uh, get loyalty order result, send it back as a success. If not, it'll be set to, the success will be set to fault. It comes back um, into the rendering header model, uh, and again, we make sure it's successful. If it is, then we try to look for a component. If there is a component, then we get the value for the points, and then that goes into the view, um, and the, in the view, essentially, we get the extended model. Um, we will get to the tooltip and all of that in another, uh, in a bit, little bit, and essentially, um, we get the, the points earned. Uh, from um, the extended model which we have. And that should display um, display the, the points earned for us. Um, and then we will have to do a couple other things on top of that. So what I wanted to show you is um, in the orders API samples as a get order. And if you notice, we are passing in the order ID. Let me take that out and hit send. Um, so you get some piece of information once you pass in just the auto ID. Now if we um, take out, uh, add the expand lines to it, you get a little bit more information. So as I was saying with the OData request, and I'm very new to this, um, you can expand on the result and OData will be more than happy to oblige and give you more information as you need it. Um, 
and that's how you pretty much get uh, the values you wanted to. So let's get back to the solution. So now that we have um, now that we have the rendering model, we need to patch it in order to override what's there by default. Uh, and that will let um, Sitecore know, hey, for this specific model, just uh, switch out with whatever it is right now and then place mine uh, as part of it. So next we are going to push our build and then we will try to refresh the page and see what happens. Okay, so we pushed it. Um, now let's see what happens. All right, before I forget, um, one of the most important things is uh, install the OData connected service plugin for your Visual Studio. This will be helpful, especially when you're dealing with the proxy and the regeneration. I will have a link uh, for this um, on the blog post as well. Um, so take it from there. So where this is helpful is that um, uh, the concept of a service proxy is it, it triages your calls between the web and the engine. And one of the things you need to do is you need to be able to um, call the engine from here, right? So for instance, uh, if you look, the service proxy generated code has all the information about the engine, any custom objects we created, registered, things like that. So for instance, the website will have no clue about the loyalty component whatsoever. Uh, but the only way it would know is through service proxy. So what you need to do is has, uh, use the proxy project from the SDK. Uh, you would come over here and you would hit, uh, once you install the plugin, uh, you'd be able to do update um, OData connected service. Uh, for the commerce ops, just uh, make sure that these are the values. Um, and then in the advanced setting, make sure that you have the first one checked with Commerce op Ops and then enable entity property tracking. And then you would hit finish. It will ask you if you should override, go ahead and do so um, because it would contain everything. So this uh, is dependent on you pushing your engine code up to publishing all the engine code uh, before you do this because it's going to talk to your engine to generate this. So again, for the shops, again, make sure that this is the URL. Uh, for the settings for commerce shop, the custom namespace should not be checked. Uh, the enable entity property tracking should be checked and you hit finish again. Um, and then it will regenerate the files. And the best way to double check is if you open the CS. So check that, that would definitely help. The other thing I found um, useful for myself anyways, is uh, I set the, the version um, for the build just because I wanna make sure that it is picking up mine, not the, the base um, set core proxy. So the other thing you could do is if you have, um, so by default, um, because of all the headache, um, we set pretty much like the, because all data versions can go to 7X uh, at this moment. So just to avoid that, I usually set the copy local defaults on those, but the commerce server proxy, because we have a reference to the project itself, uh, I want to make sure that the proxy reference goes through, it does the build, and it actually pushes my version of the service proxy and not what comes by default from the NuGet package. Um, so that I wanted to mention. One other thing is that um, we do have to register our, uh, our manager, which is our loyalty manager, uh, which I did, and that should take care of most of it. Um, uh, let me load up the, the order page, and then let me show that to you. Okay, so the order loaded, as you can see, we got the, um, the total point value of the order, um, but we are not seeing any label next to it. And that involves a little bit of SXA magic. Uh, and again, I am not an SXA uh, guru by any means. I'm just starting to learn it. So I will walk you through uh, the process of actually getting that label over here and see um, what comes out of it. 
All right, so to finish this off, we created a new template. Um, so outside uh, in the feature, just for upgrade purposes and things like that, um, we wanted two fields, uh, one to specify the label for points earn and the points earn tooltip have standard values so I don't have to modify the, the text immediately. And then once you do that, uh, essentially what we need to do is to be able to specify that. So in here, in the order header, I just added the inheritance of um, loyalty to it. Uh, and then inside the, or the data source for that specific rendering, um, actually exists here in data commerce account order header as you can see by default it brought in the values i can change it if i wanted to publish everything once all of that is done and you get your points earned right there so so we have the, the points and um that's pretty much it um we will try to look at a, a more complicated um plugin functionality in the later videos hopefully this works um, and again do not forget to um, post your questions on slack or stack exchange both are very useful thank you